it's me, Stephanie, reporting to you from my home library with another great story today. I just wanted to take a moment to say that I have been watching all of the things and reading all of the things that you've been posting in response to the books that we've read, and you are doing such a wonderful job. Uh, I wanted to commend you on your creativity, and thank you for watching and posting all the great things that you're doing. I have another great book for you today. Let's read what we're going to do. It says, hello. Today we will read Everybody Needs a Rock. Now you might not have known that you needed a rock until right now, but today's book will tell you that you most definitely do. And it will tell you how to pick the perfect rock for you. It's a question only you can answer. And after we do that, we are going to write all about your special new pet rock. Now, the illustrations might look a little familiar in today's book, <clears throat> and that's because it's the same author and illustrator as the last two books that we've read. You might remember last week's I'm in Charge of Celebration by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnell. So we know that um, these books are usually really poetic. It's kind of like a, reading a poem. And um, that the pictures are very abstract and usually take place in the desert. So we read that one. And we also read The Other Way to Listen, which is about how to listen when it's really quiet and listen to some of the silent things in nature. Now today's book is also going to be very poetic. It's also going to have really abstract artistic illustrations with some magical things going on. And it's also going to be about how to listen and talk to and feel nature. This is Everybody Needs a Rock by Bird Baylor. And this book is not gonna tell us how rocks are made or where rocks come from. It's going to tell us in a poetic way how we can interact with rocks. What do rocks smell like? What do rocks taste like? What do rocks sound like? And how do they feel? So bring your poetic imagination and let's read Everybody Needs a Rock by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnell. And there, ooh, there's our first big rock of the book. And it looks like we're kind of out in the desert again. Everybody Needs a Rock by Bird Baylor, and the pictures are by Peter Parnell. Now look closely at the rocks because you've probably noticed, if you've been anywhere with a lot of rocks, that you'll see one and you'll say, ooh, that one kind of looks like a whale, or that one kind of looks like a goblin troll. All right, so take a close look at the rocks because some faces might emerge in the illustration. Ah, then this one looks like an elephant, right? Everybody needs a rock. I'm sorry for kids who don't have a rock for a friend. I'm sorry for kids who only have tricycles, bicycles, horses, elephants, goldfish, three-roomed playhouses, fire engines, wind-up dragons, and things like that if they don't have a rock for a friend. What do you really have if you don't have a good rock? Hmm. And that's why I'm giving them my own 10 rules for finding a rock. Not just any rock. I mean a special rock that you find for yourself and keep for as long as you can. Maybe forever. And there she is thinking about a rock. Hmm. What if somebody says, what's so special about that rock? Don't even tell them. I don't. Nobody is supposed to know what's special about another person's rock. All right, here are the rules. So here's everyone asking her, hey, what's so special about that rock? And you should not tell them, right? It's like your own secret. Only you can know what's special about it. Rule number one. Now this is how you're going to pick your rock. And pay close attention because you're going to go out and do this afterwards. If you can, 
go to a mountain made out of nothing but a hundred million small, shiny, beautiful, roundish rocks. But if you can't, any place will do. Even an alley. Even a sandy road. Because we know that rocks are pretty much everywhere if we start looking. Rule number two. When you are looking at rocks, don't let mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or even best friends talk to you. You should choose a rock when everything is quiet. Don't let bogs, dogs bark at you. And don't let bees buzz at you. If they do, don't worry. The worst thing you can do is go rock hunting when you're worried. So it looks like she's sitting very quietly and calmly looking out at the land and saying, hmm, what rock is speaking to me? And you have to be quiet and can't have a lot of people around to hear your own voice, right? Rule number three, bend over. More, more, even more. <laughs> you may have to sit on the ground with your head almost touching the earth. You have to look a rock right in the eye. Otherwise, don't blame me if you can't find a good one. So you're going to have to get down real close. And there she is, looking that rock right in the eye. Rule number four. Don't get a rock that's too big. You'll always be sorry. It won't fit in your hand right, and it won't fit in your pocket. A rock as big as an apple is too big. And a rock as big as a... I don't know if you can tell, that's a horse, is way, way, way too big. Looks like maybe that's an apple-sized one, which is still too big, and a horse rock is way too big. Rule number five. Conversely, don't choose a rock that's too small. It will only be easy to lose. Or a mouse might eat it and think that it's a seed. That's not a seed, that's a rock. And believe me, that happened to a boy in the state of Arizona. He lost his rock when that mouse ate it. Rule number six. The size must be perfect. It has to feel easy in your hand when you close your fingers over it. It has to feel jumpy in your pocket when you run. Some people touch a rock a thousand times a day. There aren't many things that feel as good as a rock if the rock is perfect. Now I have a special rock that I'm gonna show you after this book and I keep it in my pocket most days and it really makes me feel better. Rule number seven, look for the perfect color. That could be sort of pinkish gray with bits of silvery shine in it. Some rocks that look brown are really other colors, but you only see them when you squint and when the sun is right. Another way to see colors is to dip your rock in a clear mountain stream if one is passing by. And here's a beautiful picture of the hand dipping that rock stream. This also works if you take your rock and dip it into a bowl of water or even put it in the bathtub. You start to see new deep colors. Rule number eight. Now the shape of the rock is up to you. There's a little girl in Alaska who only likes flat rocks. Don't ask me why I like them lumpy. The thing to remember about shapes is this. Any rock looks good with a hundred other rocks around it on a hill. But if your rock is going to be special, it should look good all by itself in the bathtub. And that one looks pretty good. That's a really interesting shape. <clears throat> Rule number nine. Always sniff a rock. Rocks have their own smells. I'm serious. Some kids can tell by sniffing whether a rock came from the middle of the earth or from an ocean or from a mountain where wind and sun touched it every day for a million years. You'll find out that grown-ups can't tell these things and too bad for them. 
They just can't smell as well as a kid can. And here's a really beautiful picture of a girl. And we know that right down here, she's probably smelling a rock. And she's imagining that this rock is touched every day by the wind and sun and the mountain, right? She knows where it came from just by the smell. See if you have this power. And rule number 10, this is important. Don't ask anybody to help you choose. I've seen a lizard pick one rock out of a desert full of rocks and go and sit there alone. I've seen a snail pass up 20 rocks and spend all day getting to the one it wanted. You have to make up your own mind. You'll know. Trust yourself. There's the lizard who's just picked its its perfect rock out of all of those rocks. All right, that's it. 10 rules. And if you think of any more, write them down yourself. I'm going out to play a game that just takes me and one rock to play. I happen to have a rock right here in my hand. And it looks like she's even inside a rock there. I think it's because maybe when you're holding your special rock, it makes you feel really still and calm inside. And I feel like that's what she's feeling in that picture. All right, friends, are you ready to see my special rock that I found last year? I'll show you. All right, now I saw this rock and I knew it was the one for me. It was on a beach full of rocks and I'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, and I actually took a little bit of paint and even painted my rock. This is what I call the magic baby rock. You can tell that it's flat and it's wrapped in this blanket full of stars and it's really happy. And you can also see it fits into my hand pretty perfectly just like that. And I like that it's flat because it can fit right into my pocket. Now what I would like you to do um, after the video ends sometime this week is go out um, wherever you can and find a rock. Now try to find one that uh, just really speaks to you. Use the 10 rules in the book. Remember, we're going like, to listen to it, smell it, feel how it feels in your hand, get down on the ground and look it straight in the eye. And once you've found your rock, I would like you to fill out a sheet that looks like this about it. Here we go. It says, all about my rock. You can draw a picture of your rock, write down three words that describe your rock, tell us where you found it, and what you like best about it. Why did you pick that rock? So if I was going to do this for Happy Baby Rock, I would get out my markers. What color do I want to use? Let's use maybe blue and gray and gold. And I would draw a picture of Happy Baby Rock. It's kind of like this oval shape. And there's like a little space right here. And the baby is smiling. Right. And it has little stars all over it. So that's a picture of my rock. Three words that describe my rock would be Happy, calm, I'm actually going to add two more, my rock is also smooth and I think it's magic. Where did I find it? I found this rock on the beach in Los Osos which means the bears. It was up by San Luis Obispo and I was walking on the beach and there were so many rocks all over the place. But I crouched down to look at some of them and I said, who left this baby on the beach? And I knew that this rock had to be mine. And what do I like best about it? Mm. 
The thing I like best about my rock is that it's always cool. It almost feels like cold every time I touch it in my hand and in that way it's soothing to me. All right friends, thank you for listening and um, I can't wait to see your rock and have you tell me all about it. Oh, I have one more thing. Uh, if you have a scale at home, it's also really fun to weigh your rock. And um, let's finish up today just by finding out how much my happy baby rock weighs. I've never done this before. Okay. My scale is set to ounces. I'm going to take you over with me. Okay. Setting happy baby rock on the scale. Oh, it weighs 0.7 ounces. And guess what? Seven is a really lucky number. All right, friends, I had so much fun reading to you. Go out and find a rock, and I'll be back next week with another story. Bye!